This is Newsmax TV. I'm Ashley Martella. The controversy over all the czars Obama has appointed continues, 35 of them at last count. The czars are not confirmed by the Senate. In many cases, we don't know how much they're paid. And even more alarmingly, we don't know the parameters of their authority. The executive director of the National Republican Trust PAC, Scott Wheeler, has co-authored a new book on this very subject with a very revealing look at who these czars are, their backgrounds, and their political ideologies. It's entitled Shadow Government, What Obama Doesn't Want You to Know About His Czars. Mr. Wheeler is a former television producer and investigative journalist. He's produced 17 TV documentaries and consulted on over a dozen others. He joins us now from Arlington, Virginia. Welcome, Scott. Good to be with you. Let's begin with Obama's recently appointed FCC diversity czar, Mark Lloyd. In his case, is the word diversity a misnomer, do you think? Well, they define diversity as people who look different and think precisely the same way which is a little bit antithetical to diversity. But uh, Mr. Lloyd has an, a very interesting background and has been unashamed to uh, uh, brag about uh, some of his beliefs. Okay, specifically what are those beliefs and how alarming are they? Well, he praised uh, Hugo Chavez, the uh, Venezuelan dictator, uh, in a way, in, a, in fact, he did so on camera, uh, perhaps not really uh, realizing that he was being taped at the moment. But he it was explaining and sort of telegraphing his agenda for uh, how you control media in the United States. And what he said was, after Chavez's first attempt at a revolution, he didn't get the fact that you have to take over media properties. And so he was thrown in prison. After he got out of prison and launched his second uh, revolution, he took over the media. And then, in, in uh, Mark Lloyd's words, uh, had a very good revolution and, in fact, remains in power today. And Lloyd has telegraphed that he thinks the way you get control of the media, talk radio especially, to silence uh, Rush Limbaugh and others, uh, the way you get in control of it is you create very onerous taxes on private-owned uh, media, uh, radio stations, etc. And when companies, media companies, communication companies go out of business, uh, because of the onerous heavy tax, you take those stations and award them to people that uh, how they define what they define as uh, minority uh, interest groups. Todd Stern, climate change czar. You call him a panic-stricken global warming fanatic who once used to holler the end is near rants on leftist websites. What about him? Well, Stern is a true believer, or at least he says he is, in that the sky is falling and no amount of scientific evidence, which has changed considerably, considerably in the past 10 years since he started uh, uh, ho hollering uh, uh, that the sky is falling, uh, has changed his opinion at all. In fact, he seems to suggest that it's far more dire at this point now than it uh, ever has been, despite the trends and the scientific evidence that uh, shows that we're in a cooling period. All right, also on climate change, Carol Browner as energy czar. What are her intentions, do you think? Well, she's stated them in the past. She was a very radical EPA director under Clinton. She's also advised her staff not to send emails because they can't be destroyed. And incidentally, her relationship with the, with the Socialist International has been scrubbed from the internet. Fortunately, we got it, uh, we got a hold of that information before it was scrubbed from the internet. But no one has raised the question with her, why was she a member of this group that believes in an internationalist socialist uh, society? Uh, that seems to uh, uh, beg someone's interest in the media other than us uh, to, to ask those questions, especially considering the very dangerous and onerous uh, authority that climate people in charge of energy, energy and climate issues have these days with uh, uh, cap and trade legislation in the Congress, they will be responsible for enforcing whatever comes out of uh, the House and the Senate uh, in terms of uh, uh, cap and trade legislation. And Here's a person who really thinks that they can control social behavior through energy policy. It's a very dangerous precedent for the nation. And Scott, there's Kevin Jennings, the safe school czar. He's got a very colorful background. Would you please tell us a little bit about it? Well, when you look at Kevin Jennings, it makes people wonder 
What was the president thinking when he appointed a, a guy to be in charge of safe schools and the, the policy maker for school safety? Here's a guy who wrote the foreword for a book called Queering Elementary Education. And as we broke in the, the story in the book uh, last month when the uh, advanced copy came out, we also reported that Bill Ayers, the radical under weather underground terrorist from Chicago, also wrote a blurb for this book, Queering Elementary Education. Uh, and again, no one, this has flown completely under the radar screen of the media other than a few uh, places like Fox News and Newsmax. The interesting thing is that uh, Jennings also had spoke openly about a 15-year-old boy who came to his office when he was a teacher and explained to him that he had picked up a man the night before in a bus stop and a bus station and gone home with him. Jennings did not call the police to report a statutory rape. He did not call the boy's parents. He simply said, I hope you wore a condom. In your opinion, how many of these 35 czars you profiled in your book would be confirmed by the Senate if they were subject to confirmation? Well, that is a good question. And clearly, since most of them are not confirmed and they are completely out of the sunshine of congressional oversight, um, it's hard to say how many, in the case of, of Cass Sunstein, who was confirmed by the Senate, uh, a, a person with very radical views to be the science czar, he uh, was confirmed by the Senate, uh, the Democrat-controlled Senate, but, uh, and, and with radical beliefs, he believed that uh, uh, babies can, are not real people until they're alive for 60 days, for example. He also believed that the sky was the, uh, another believer in global warming who also in 1972 believed we were going to have an ice age by the end of the 1970s. Now he's back on the other side and said we're, you know, we're, we're, on, we're having global warming now. Uh, a very controversial background and he was able to get confirmed in the Senate. And so it's hard to say, but we, we know one thing is for sure. The White House did not want these guys going up there with a Republican in the Senate hearings on the panel raising questions about their past allegiances to organizations that uh, promoted 9-11 uh, uh, conspiracies or uh, in the case of Van Jones, uh, an avowed communist. Even though they, the Republicans would not have had the power to stop these nominations from going through, they could have at least pointed out and educated to the American people the kind of people Obama was sending up and appointing to spend their tax dollars. Great book. You'll find information about Obama's czars there you won't find anywhere else. Again, the name of the book, Shadow Government, What Obama Doesn't Want You to Know About His Czars, and it's available at GOPtrust.com. Scott Wheeler, thanks so much for talking with us here at Newsmax, and good luck with the book. Great to be with you. And thank you for watching Newsmax TV. Sarah Palin's new book, Going Rogue in American Life, will be released on November 17th. You can be among the first to get your copy. Check out our incredible free offer for Sarah's new book. Just go to Newsmax.com and click on the top banner for this great offer. Act today.